This is such a beautiful style of cable and I used it on the Valencia sweater and I liked it so much I wanted to work with it again. This time I'm working it on a background of single crochet stitches. Notice there's no holes or gaps on the back. It's our background fabric remains solid. And so I will be using today a furl streamline hook. They have a great line of hooks. I'll link that below as well as the furls whims merino, which is really nice. It's a Z twist crocheters yarn. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by showing you sections of the repeat. I won't be doing every single row on camera because a lot of it is repeats of what I will be showing you. We're going to make this video not too long. So to start, if you were starting, um, rows one through three would be single crochet. Uh, that's what I have here. I have three rows of single crochet since I worked my last cable. When you're first starting out and you don't have any front floating stitches to work into, you will simply work into the single crochet stitches from the first row. But since we have some floating stitches to work into, we're going to, going to go ahead and do that. So this would be row four of the repeat. I've single crocheted in the first three, and now I will be doing my first front float stitch where we are going to do a treble. So we're going to yarn over twice. I suggest after you yarn over to take your hook and slightly pull down, keeping that yarn tight so that the yarn wraps tight here, kind of around your hook. That will help with the slack as you work these longer floating stitches. Now you'll go into your very first floating stitch and then complete that treble. And then we will do another treble into the next floating stitch. And here is where we will single crochet one. And now we are going to repeat that again. Ooh. And now we are going to repeat that again. Yarn over twice, be sure to kind of pull down. And we'll do another floating treble. I call these front float stitches and we're doing two front floats worked repeated after each other before we do our background stitch of one. And now we are going to front float two trebles again. And now we've completed the right leg of what looks like this cable that has like two legs that wrap around each other. So we have done six front floating stitches with the single crochet background stitches behind. And now we will do two and make sure you're not skipping any of the background stitches. We will do two single crochet. And now we're basically going to repeat what we just did over here where we will front float two trebles or triple crochet. Single crochet a background stitch, the very next background stitch without skipping anything. And now we will front float two trebles again into the next available floating stitches from below. And we will single crochet one in a background stitch. And then we will front float two trebles again. Now 
If you notice as I work my cables, a lot of times I don't exactly work these the same as a post stitch where you're going around the entire cable. I like to only work through about two strands of the cable. There's three available, but I find if I don't work around the entire cable, it blends a bit better, but that's not necessary. If you wanna work it like we work those post stitches, feel free, you can go around the entire cable. And now we will single crochet in our last three. All right, so we have done what would be the repeat row four. So our very first row of front floating stitches in this in the repeat. We will turn and we're going to do row five. Now row five is an odd row and in this pattern for every single odd row, you're going to single crochet 14 background stitches by skipping any floating stitches. We will not work the floating stitches. We'll just let them sit on the front of the work. So we only want to single crochet 14 of the background stitches. So as you'll see, as I get to these two floating stitches, I skip them and go to the next single crochet. I'll skip two floating stitches and work the single crochet. Whoop, coming off my finger there. Oh, I can't save it. Then I will skip two and work two single crochets, those were those center single crochets that kind of separate what looks like the cable legs. And then we'll skip two floating stitches and single crochet one, skip two floating stitches and single crochet one, and then skip our last two floating stitches and single crochet in the last three. I suggest until you get really comfortable reading the floating stitches, which won't take too long, but go ahead and each time you do an odd row, count those single crochets. It's only counting 14, just to make sure that you've got all 14 background stitches there. Now we will turn again, chain one, and for the next two rows, which would be row six and seven, we are going to simply be single crocheting across. So here we are. We are going to be doing row eight, which is a row where we are going to cross the legs of our cable. We will single crochet into the first three. Remember when I did row six and seven, it wasn't on camera, but it was simply single crocheting across. Um, I think we've got that down and we didn't need to put that on camera. It can get boring if I'm just <laughs> crocheting the whole thing. So now, to, in order to make this beautiful left cross look cable, we will skip the first two, four, six, our right leg cables, and we will be working into the next six floating stitches on this side. So in order to do that, we will need a little bit of a longer cable. So instead of yarning over twice, we are going to actually yarn over three times and do a double treble. And once again, kind of pull down. This will help with that slack with that last yarn over. Now, an important note here is you don't want any puckering. You don't want this to pull at the background fabric. So as you do this, pay attention to your tension as well as the background fabric. If it's pulling too tight, either loosen your tension or add another yarn over, as crazy as that sounds. You don't want it to pull. And if it's too loose, go ahead and tighten up your tension or if needed, take away a yarn over. The main thing is just to allow these cables to sit on top of the fabric without pulling or changing that background fabric um, width or having any puckering. So now I've done two front float double trebles and we're going to go ahead and look at the back. There's gonna be behind here, but you don't wanna skip any single crochet stitches. So you wanna be sure to, if you need to pull that forward, Find that fourth single crochet stitch in the row, and we're going to work that. And now we will do the next front float two double treble. Whoop. 
And sometimes these just take some practice. And even for myself, once I start into a pattern, the first couple of cables, I might have to undo and redo a stitch just to get that tension right. And then I can fly through the rest of the pattern. So now we've done two more of the front float double treble. We don't wanna skip any of those background stitches and we wanna single crochet into the fifth stitch in the row. And now we are going to do two more double trebles. Oh, my yarn is pulling over here. <laughs> I need to loosen that up a little. And now we will go to the center two stitches in a row. We're going to work two single crochet and this completes that left leg that will appear to be tucked underneath the right leg. And now that we've done these, you can see they're already starting to create that curve across that we like. We're gonna go back and do the same thing and we're going to work all six of these front float stitches. In order to do this, a lot of times, I like to really turn my work, just so that I can reach back comfortably in order to get those nice double treble stitches. So it might feel kind of funny at first that you're doing a little bit of acrobatics here, but it's really not that bad if you just turn your work, it'll feel just like you're working a normal double treble. As normal as it, as it is to work double trebles, which I don't feel like I do all that often. I only tend to when I'm doing cable work. And this first one, like I said, it can feel a little bit fickly, but once you get going, So there's our first double treble and now we're going to do a second double treble into the next available floating stitch. And now we'll single crochet one. And now we'll do front float two double treble again. Again, notice I take my time with the way I load my hook when I do, I get the yarn overs and my tension just right and I kind of slightly pull down. And if I get that just right, I, I like the way it turns out. Also, it helps if you go into the right stitch. So the very next available, sometimes you have to double check to make sure you're not skipping any of those front floatings as you work across them. They blend nicely together for this type of cable work, but you really do have to pay attention to where they are. And that is, yeah, man, I must be tired. I'm losing track. That is another two set of two front float double trebles. So we'll single crochet one. And now we're going to do our last set. They're kind of hidden in here because we've got this cross going on. So make sure if you need to kind of pull this and say, okay, there's one, two, there's my two unworked floating stitches. So we're going to do a front float double treble around those two stitches. The nice thing about this Z twist yarn 
is the way that the yarn is plied, especially when you're doing cable work and you're doing a lot of cables, which I feel like, you know, there tends to be a lot more twisting. This type of yarn twists in the proper direction for crocheters because there's some yarn that I'll try to do cables with. And as I'm working the cables, the yarn is unplying itself, where with the Z twist, I don't have that issue. Now we're going to go ahead and single crochet into our last three stitches. And this, I feel like, is the most challenging row in this entire thing. So congratulations if you've made it through that, which it's not that bad. You are flying because this is the most challenging part. So no biggie. When you work this next odd row, which remember odd rows, we will be skipping any floating stitches. So we're only working the single crochet and we're single crocheting 14 across this odd row, skipping those floating stitches. Be sure on this cross, and I'm gonna show you here, that you make sure to skip the right stitches because those center stitches are a little bit buried. They tend to hide themselves because we've done that cross, but it helps to kind of take the fabric. Here's where I need to skip to single crochet two. And if you just slightly pull it apart so that you can see those two single crochets that you need to work, we're gonna skip those two. We're gonna single crochet these two. It sets the fabric right and that way on the front it crosses well and it pops those floating cables on the front. So be sure every time you work an odd row where you're skipping floating stitches to double check that you're working the single crochet and no of the, none of the floating stitches and you're working all 14 single crochet stitches. Now I will single crochet two more rows back and forth. So with this, we are actually on row 12, which this is a 12 row repeat. So this will be the last repeat row. And we will be working the same stitches we did on row four. The only reason why they might look different is because we have this cross here and we're not working into something that wasn't crossed before but it is the exact same instructions. So we will single crochet in the first three. We will do a front float treble around the first two. And this is the last thing I wanted to show you here is as we did this cross, notice how I kind of pull at this fabric a little bit. We want these cables to be available to us. So you might kind of have to shift your fabric in order to make sure you can get to all of these stitches. Whenever we're doing any type of cable crossing, when they cross, we kind of have to get them to kind of pop out and also not split our yarn like I just did. So I'm doing a front float two trebles. So here's my second one in the set. And single crochet one. And now we'll work the next two front float two trebles. Ooh, lost that one there. So I'm actually getting used to, whenever I get a new crochet hook, we're just, really quick, we're gonna single crochet in the next, and then we're gonna front float two more. Whenever I get a new crochet hook, no matter what hook it is, I have to kind of get used to it. And this one is new to me and I absolutely love it. But here's a funny thing as I struggle there. I found that I keep going back and forth between the pencil hold and the knife hold. And actually the knife hold is where I am most comfortable. However, I think just because of muscle fatigue, I'm learning to do both. That way as I crochet, I can mix it up. I find some things easier to do with a pencil hold and other things easier to do with a knife hold. 
And now single crochet into the next two. And then we will front float to treble. And so as I do this, I've got a new hook and I'm getting more used to the pencil hold, which I feel like is better for filming videos. I feel like you can see more of my work without my wrist and my hand in the way. But if you see me kind of stutter with my beautiful new hook and new way to hold it, and I find these hooks are comfortable to hold this way. So that's another reason why I like doing, trying, it works for both knife and pencil. Now I'll single crochet one and I will front float to treble again. But I encourage you, even if you've been doing something one way for a long time, it's never too late to try to do it a different way. It will feel odd and uncomfortable at first, but I've only been doing this for a few months now, but I am finding it does cut down on muscle fatigue to be able to just slightly change the positions on my hands as well as a good hook like the furls hook. It will definitely cut down on that hand muscle fatigue. As, because they're more ergonomic for your hand, it's a better hold for your fingers. Um, you'll find that it does. If you have a hook that's comfortable in your hands, it will make a big difference. And this is my last, my very last, if I can get through there. Um, no, I split my yarn. I keep doing that. See, I'm still getting used to like how to do this with that pencil hold. Um, this is my very last floating stitch in this repeat that I'm going to show you. I will single crochet into the last three and that's it. So this is the 12 row repeat. Um, I know I didn't show you those single crochet rows, but I don't think that was necessary. And so I would just complete those 12 rows over and over and over to create this beautiful popping crochet cable on a background fabric of single crochet. And I really hope you enjoy this. Look for this pattern. It's really, really fun. It's out on the blog. And also I do recommend this yarn and these hooks. So I'll be sure to link those as well.